Now, one of the most powerful and compelling forms of um, research synthesis is st statistical meta-analysis. Phil will talk you through this rather wonderful slide, and hopefully at the end of this, you'll feel, oh, wow, <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is powerful. Like, that's how I feel about it. <laughs> now, has anybody encountered one of these before? I know somebody should have done. Right. Uh, Sarah, do you, know, do you know what its name is? The, the plot. Yeah, they're called forest plots, OK? Because we have this forest of evidence. We have the trees and the branches. You get it? OK? They're a forest. And that's the point. We've often got a forest of evidence, all this evidence. What does it tell us? Because they're telling us different studies tell us different things. Now, on this one, we need to go back to this farmer field school example that this group was looking at. First of all, who knows what farmer field schools are? Could you say it in a couple of sentences? Um, they're basically like um, grassroots institutions where farmers can get information. Most is usually free information, especially about local production and local crops grown mm -hmm. in the area. It's about teaching farmers about farming in the field rather than an uh, institutional environment. Some farmer field schools do have a classroom-based element, but many of them don't. You teach about soil, crop rotation, accessibility and management of water in the field. Okay, it's learning, uh, literally grassroots uh, learning. Um, so it's a bottom-up approach. And it's a, an approach that's strongly favoured by certain international groups, like the Food and Agriculture Organisation and the World Bank and other people, they encourage this. So given that's a sort of a preferred policy position, we, when I was at 3IE, which I'll come on to later, we undertook a systematic review, does it work? Is it true that, that farmer field schools do the following? They're supposed to increase the knowledge of farmers about soil and about sustainable uh, farming. Um, so second, uh, they are supposed to increase productivity of farms. And third, they're supposed to do so without damaging the environment because you're not using pesticides. They're environmentally uh, advantageous ways of farming. And there's a fourth element, which of the theory of the policy is that if you teach a group of farmers how to farm, this way, they will then diffuse that knowledge amongst all the farms in their area. So that's how you build a more sustainable and food secure environment uh, that doesn't damage the environment. That is the theory. We call it the theory of change. Okay? So we're testing it now. So let's come back to this rather strange graph. What does it tell us? Well, first of all, there are, can you just hit a couple of buttons there? There are 18 single studies that met the quality requirements that we showed earlier. High internal validity, good science, good external validity, they applied to the real world and they were well reported. Now, when we did the initial search, we found 13,000 studies, but of course, very few of them were actually relevant. They weren't really about farmer field schools, it's just the word farmer was in there somewhere, or field or schools. <laughs> Okay? Second, what we have here are experimental, or if you like, comparative studies. This is where they're reporting on, on situations where people have gone through a farmer field school compared with those who haven't. So it's a comparative analysis. And that really brought it down because people tend not, have not hitherto really done much experimental work of that nature. So we searched uh, over 20 years of publications in every country in the world. And out of that, we've got 18 studies that meet high quality and meet the comparative criteria. Now, what we have here <coughs> is a series of standard mean differences, <coughs> or, uh, yeah, the, the mean difference, that's the mean difference in the experimental group versus the mean difference in the control group. So we have the line zero here. If, if the, the results fall here, there is absolutely no difference. OK? There's no difference. It, it, it doesn't either work or not work. If the mean difference is to the right, it, tends to, it tells us that the evidence is in favor of a farmer field school. It gets a better outcome in terms of knowledge. If the evidence falls to the left of zero, it suggests that the non-farmer field school method is superior in terms of these outcomes. So now you know what it is, you've got a visual. 
which just looking at it, this one happens to tell us, this is unusual, we usually get a lot of stuff on both sides, but this one tells us that most of the studies suggest, I'm saying suggest, a positive outcome in terms of increasing farmers' knowledge. And by the way, I haven't brought all the slides and their productivity. But it's not quite that simple. There's some noise going on. First of all, look at the first one. It sits almost exactly on the line of unity. And in fact, the confidence interval chips over to the other side. So it's, a, it's pretty inconclusive on its own. This is a bit clearer, but this one, it's a good effect size. It suggests farmers still schools work, but again, the confidence intervals run in favor. For some of the distribution, it falls into the uh, non-farmer field school. Same with this one and this one. So we've now got a bit of a mixed bag of evidence. <clears throat> so, drum roll, please. That, that's, our, that's our graphic for the morning. Uh, the most important statistic we have here is circled. That is called the cumulative estimate of effect. So what we've done here is we've taken the data from all of those 18 studies, extracted them, and combined them into a single study, a single sample. So instead of having lots of fairly small sample sizes, we've now got one big sample and therefore, that's going to do a couple of things. It's going to pull the averages, and it's going to pull the variance. And you can see it's done that nicely. We get a very clear positive outcome. And the degree of uncertainty really narrows. So when I get one that looks like this, and by the moment, they don't always look like this, it really does suggest So the first thing we can tell the minister in our brief, we write the brief, the first bit of information, we are fairly confident at the 95% level, that farmer field schools enhance the knowledge of farmers about uh, crops and, 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 and productivity. That, that's a good message. We've got that one. Now we have to think of the set, the, well, the fourth of my questions was, does it diffuse to all the farmers in the area? We only have five studies that met that criteria because only five looked at the diffusion question. So we've really got a very narrow base, but it's pretty much the best we've got over 20 years of research in this area. Okay, drum roll number two. Right, that's as good as it gets. <laughs> now, the cumulative effect size. Does anybody want to tell me what, what the effect is? Is it positive or negative? Yeah. It's pretty, it, it tells us that on the whole, generalizable, on the whole, on average, nothing more than that at the moment, it tells us that the farmer field schools do not result in the diffusion of knowledge. So the second part of the policy element is not correct. And I would report that back to my minister, saying, Minister, great on knowledge, great on productivity, but it, you don't expect it to diffuse from this evidence alone. There's other evidence we're going to find. Now, think about it for a minute. There's something wrong with the policy, the theory behind the policy. Because if Alex comes on a farmer field school and now is getting higher productivity for his farm, why would he come and tell Sarah, who has a farm down the road, why would he go and tell her his comparative advantage? In a competitive economy, there's no reason why there should be diffusion. Diffusion will only work under certain economic circumstances where you have collective farms, tight in it communities, where they're working towards a common aim, where you've got diffuse communities and a competitive environment, you would take the price advantage. You would not pass it on. So you need to think about that. that in a sense, the policy has not really been thought through. And this gets us to rethink the policy. OK? Now, there's, just before we go on to the qualitative stuff, let's look at the pesticide evidence. Does <coughs> farmer field school, do farmer field schools decrease the use of pesticides. Now we want the answers to be on the left because we're not looking at a positive, we want a negative advantage. We want it to have less pesticides. Just eyeballing it, what does it tell us? Does it tell us that it increases or decreases pesticide use? Decreases. Decreases. It decreases, yes, pretty much. But hang on, Minister, I, um, <laughs> Minister, I've got three studies here. I've never read these studies. Minister, I've got three studies. I can tell you, Minister, uh, it does not reduce pesticide use. The minister will be very impressed. You've got three studies, experimental studies. Well, we're not going to go with it. 
But minister, I've got, how many have I got here? 22, isn't it? Minister, I've got 19 other studies that actually tell me it does work. Now the minister's getting really frustrated because I'm now saying it does and it doesn't work, which is what we always do in academia. <laughs> well, drum roll number three, right? We actually, when we pull the data together into a, into a summative, uh, cumulative sample, we get a very clear message that pesticides use is reduced by the use of farmer field schools. What about diffusion? The diffusion of that knowledge. Well, we only had eight studies there, and I won't do another drum roll. How would you interpret that? Does the diffusion of knowledge, uh, does that knowledge get diffused or not? No, no it has no effect. It pretty much sits on the line of unity, it, it, and it's, it, well, it's, it, it crosses it. So we can be fairly confident that we, it, we, it doesn't, the knowledge doesn't diffuse. So we've got more evidence that the diffusion argument of the policy is weak. So we've now got a strong message for the minister. Knowledge and productivity increases, but diffusion probably, probably doesn't. But there's going to be exceptions because you've got 18, 22 countries there. Just look at them. Indonesia, India, Philippines, China, Sudan, Vietnam, Zimbabwe. Of course, we've gone all around the global south. But there's going to be exceptions, and we now need to go into the particular. That's the general point of view. And Alex is going to walk us mm -hmm. on how we synthesize evidence for the particular. And for that, we tend to use qualitative uh, evidence. Have you got any questions on the statistical meta-analysis? Any questions? Yes, please. How do you come to your list of uh, what are the search criteria? I mean, it, it might now be 22 single studies, but if, if I search for other um, uh, aspects or other, if, uh, if I just put another component into my search, then, so, then probably it turns. It's a very good question. We build our search around the question, are film of pharma field school, schools more effective than non-pharma field schools in terms of outcomes. So the search will look something like pharma field schools, uh, outcomes, pesticides. We build a very complex search string. We used to call them librarians, but they've correctly been upgraded because they, they work on how to frame a search so that we get as close to 100% of the evidence. You're right. If you want to ask a different question, we rerun the search. If you want to add a component, but we worked, we, it took us nearly two months just to get our search string right on this because we're dealing with a huge amount of data from over 30 or 40 databases, which I'll come to later. Yeah, we'll come to that in a minute. That's a very good question. That, that question actually hits on a very important point. One of the most important things to do is getting that question right. And that's what I spend a lot of my time with policy doing. I don't want you to ask me, do, do, do prisons work? That doesn't mean anything. Ask me, it's very specific questions about prisons, about your intervention, about your outcome. And that allows you to then synthesize research to answer that question. I'll just put that up there. Pico. So statistical meta-analysis, you're right, it's, it's statistical. But the only way you can lump together all those studies is if they have certain similarities. And what we're looking for in order to be able to carry out this analysis is the population. Are they looking at the right group? Are they interested in farmers, in farmer field schools? In farmers, sorry. The intervention, are we looking at farmer field schools or are we looking at farmer field schools plus some other type of intervention or farmer field schools in a classroom? Are we, you have to make sure that they're similar. Are we looking at farmer field schools? The very important point about um, that film made earlier, Comparators, are they comparing farm field schools to something else, i.e. are they answering the, quest, the research question we're trying to understand? And finally, the outcomes, are they all trying to understand knowledge outcomes or pesticide use or productivity? So you have to make sure, we, we use this, this framework, PICO, to help us find the research we then synthesize. Because you cannot lump up studies together if they don't have the similarities. It's just not going to work. Um, even stronger than that, they've got to be remarkably similar on those four dimensions. And just statistically, you want the confidence intervals to line up and be overlapping. If you have lots of outliers, you've got what we call heterogeneity difference. What we've got here are homogeneous studies, both in terms of their PICO, they're looking at the same things, and their, their results align 
reasonably. Now, when you get outliers, you can often run a systematic review with them and then do a sensitivity analysis and take them out to see whether that study is making the difference. Now, this isn't a statistics uh, masterclass. There are very detailed methods by which we do this, and I will be happy to run us one this afternoon if there's some time on how we do the statistics. So we need to move on because this is simply illustrating how by using statistical meta-analysis, we can answer the question, does it work? And the answer to this is yes, in general, at the 95% level, but, and this is where we ask Alex to come in, tell me a bit about the particular, what makes it work? And where it doesn't work, why doesn't it work? And that's where we use a different type of synthesis. Thank you.